The Sora 2 API just dropped. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own Sora Studio and get it up and running in as little as one prompt using it with Cloud Code. My few step process is gonna save you tons of time from having to go through their API documentation yourself, especially if you don't wanna to have to learn the nitty gritty. So if that piques your interest, then you won't be Sora for watching the whole video. Let's dive in. All right, so this is what we put together and I called it the Sora Studio. And all we have to do is just put our prompt right here and I'll say something like, create a video of someone talking through and explaining how large language models work to an audience of non-technical folks. And then we paste that here. I'm just going to keep it on Sora 2, the latest model. I'll click on eight seconds, and then we'll pick a specific aspect ratio. So either portrait, landscape, wide landscape, or tall. Now the higher resolution and the larger the dimensions, the longer it will take to actually run. So I'll just click on portrait to get started. And then I also created a space here where you can upload an image. If you wanted to animate said image, you could upload it here. And in the prompt itself, you could specify that. Now, when we click on generate video, what's gonna happen is it'll create a video job using the API, using my API key behind the scenes. You can see right here, it's a job that's queued. And every 10 seconds, if you take a look at the left-hand side, it's gonna check the status of that job. So as soon as it goes to the point where it's ready to go, it's gonna to go to in progress and then eventually complete. And you can see now it's in progress. We're about 40% of the way there. And it's gonna keep pulling until we get to that final point. And once it's completed, this is what it looks like. And when we click on details, we'll get a summary of the video metadata. And after five seconds, it will auto load the video we put together. So if we click on this, you can see the status here and the metadata as well as the prompt. Imagine reading millions of books and conversations, then learning the patterns of how words fit together. And you can see right there, it auto played the video, but wait, there's more. If we click on this, we can download the video as is, and then we can also click on remix, which will allow you to change something about that particular video. Again, without any complex 15 to 20 node and it end workflow, you can get this not only up and running, but also functional and change it the way you want with just a few natural language prompts. And there's another useful feature I put, which is this gallery, where when you click on it, it will auto load the thumbnail associated with any one of the videos we created before. And if you hover over any of them, it will actually auto play it as well. So if I hover just over this, baby and it's going to play the video. I can hear the sound on my side. And it's just a really cool way to be able to keep track of all your history, especially if you want to do a bulk upload or a bulk download of certain videos. And the last thing I did from a user interface standpoint is create this settings tab where you can select the default duration, the default resolution, and how many times you should basically pull or how many second intervals you should take between checking the status of a particular video. Now I've teased you with what you could build and now I'll show you how you can build it. So this is the API documentation from OpenAI itself, where you have things like create a video, remix a video, list videos. And if you're non-technical, a lot of these parameters you'll see on the right-hand side here are the parameters that we're manipulating. So these are the statuses, these are the model names, this is the time and date, which translates into numbers in this case, on the date this was created, the size, the length of seconds. And then as you keep going down the path here, this is how you delete a video. This is how you retrieve video content that's been completed. And that's pretty much everything that we're doing behind the scenes, just using our singular prompt, obviously with some more adjustments if bugs pop up. Now, did I sit through and read every single line of this documentation and work really hard to copy paste all the Python and manipulate it myself? No, all I did was I scraped all of the information I just showed you, gave it to something like Claude 4.5 Sonnet and asked it to make me a mega guide of this API with the table of contents. And the whole goal of this was to provide Claude code this entire guide so it could learn it first before it could help me build it really quickly. And this same strategy works for all kinds of API services where all you have to do, even if you're not technical, is grab all the information that you would need to understand it. You give that to an AI expert like Claude code, tell it to study it first, do what's called initialization. And then once it understands the crux of what's happening and the premise, then you can go into building and you'll be surprised how quickly you can get something up and running. So this is a very lengthy documentation where it even adds some more metadata and examples for itself. And what we did is we just went into cursor in this case, you can use whatever editor you want. I like to use cursor with a combination of the Claude code extension. Once we're here, all we have to do is click on this specific file that we just reviewed right now. 
and I'll click on the top right hand side to enable the Claude Chrome extension. Once this is up and running, we can now paste our prompt. And again, am I guaranteeing you that in one shot this will work perfectly? No, but you'll have a lot of the app put together. Now, what is this magical prompt that I put together with the help of AI? This is it. It's called the master prompt. And in this case, I just said, I need a complete production ready web application for the OpenAI video API Sora, review the API documentation in the guide. And I actually referenced the guide to understand all available endpoints and best practices. So this goes through the project requirements where I want a modern user-friendly web application that allows me to generate, monitor, and manage AI videos using OpenAI Sora API with all available parameters. This goes through suggestions on what the technical stack should be. If you are not technical, then you might not care about this as much. This goes through the general file structure. And what's good about this is it's a suggestion. Claude code will end up doing what it wants to do. So when you use this prompt six times in a row, your app might not look the same every single time. It might have different colors. It might have different layout, but functionality should be very similar. And then we go through the critical features. So one of them is the API key management. So if we go back to the original app, it was very seamless for me to enter a prompt and go from a prompt to result because it remembered my API key securely on my local computer. This is the first thing that we implement here and tell it to create. And then it goes through how someone should be able to interact with the platform. So video creation form, the different parameters, like we saw the length of the video, the resolution of the video, and the height and size, as well as dimensions of said video. So this goes through all of that. It also comes up with an idea here for prompt templates. So if we navigate back to the app itself, and we go right here and we go back to the homepage, you'll see right here we have view example prompts. And if we click on that, this just gives you, the user, an example of different prompts you could send to Sora that might be easier to use than something else. And if we keep going, it basically just says create a dashboard with auto refreshing. And this is where you actually submit the job to the API so that you just have to wait and see, okay, I can see it's in queue, now it's in progress, and now it's completed. And that's a really good user interface. And you can literally build this and probably white label it to a lot of folks, especially if you put your own spin on it in terms of the direction or if it's a video for a certain niche or area. So let's imagine it's for UGC creation. That could be the whole theme of your app. So you could take my prompt, put it into AI, ask it to change it however way you want. And then this will really get you started from zero to at least 80%. So you can go to the last 20% back and forth and build whatever you're looking for. Here's where we have the visual indicators, the progress bars, the job cards. I'm being very meticulous here in terms of detail so that it comes back with as good a draft as possible. And ideally it's at least functional from the first go. So it continues. And this goes to things like the settings panel that I showed you the API integration details, the different methods, the colors we're looking for. I just noticed that Claude code loves purple. So I try to steer it away from purple as much as possible. And the last thing I do, which isn't necessarily clear cut or bulletproof with AI, is I give it a bit of a checklist, the things that have to work before it tells me it's done. So this is the checklist it should go through. And I also go through common pitfalls. Now, these are pitfalls that happened with me when I built this and it didn't take one prompt, it took 26 or 27 different prompts. A lot of it was built by prompt five, but I went through my session for you and tried to find every single time where it made a bug. So I could try to bake it into the initial prompt to lower the likelihood that would happen for you. So this is basically the breakdown of that goes through the deliverables of what must be provided. In this case, if I run this again, I'm going to make this localhost 8001 since my original app is on 8000. And then every, everything else here is just additional detail. Now, before we copy paste this into our new instance of Claude code, what we're going to do is go back. And now again, we have this guide here. What I'm going to do to become familiar or have Claude code rather become familiar is do slash in it. This basically initializes it to read everything that's in the code base at the moment you run this command. I don't have any code, but I do have this file. So it should create its own version of a Claude.md file that becomes a PhD in this particular topic. So when I hit this, it's going to start reading through this documentation, creating a synthesis and digest it for itself. You can see here it's going through. It's going to ask you for permission a few times and we'll jump to the part where it's basically consumed everything and created its own understanding of it. 
And you can see here, it's now created the Claude MD file. And if we click on this file and go right here and just close this for a second, let's just do zoom. It's now created its own synthesis and summary of the repo. You can see here it's referencing the OpenAI video guide, goes through the endpoints, the authentication, the video generation. So right now, in a way, it's been primed to understand what we're trying to accomplish. And now if we go back, we take this entire prompt, we throw this in there. Again, you can go into plan mode if you want to really create a synthesized plan and you want to make sure it's on the right track. But for the purpose of this video, I will just let it rip and see what we get. And around 15 minutes later, it ran on its own. It came back with the complete implementation. It came back with a guide on exactly what it did. And everything was set up except for two things. So I'm gonna show you that. All I did was just remind it that I already had an app running on this version of localhost. So I told it to do 8001 instead of 8000. And then I asked it for an environment file right here. And this is the environment file. And all this has is a variable called OpenAI key. I won't show it because it has my key. And then you just have to paste it, save it, and then nothing else. You can see the chat. If we go to the left hand side. This is the version it came up with. Is it necessarily as beautiful as mine side by side? No, but you could see very similar in terms of structure of the initial design. It is functional, it works. I went to the dashboard, I ran a job. In this case, it's a beautiful husky we have. If we click on details, it will autoplay this. Okay, hit enter. <laughs> and you printed it. Nice job, buddy. <laughs> the one little fly I noticed is when I open the modal here, it autoplays the video and it keeps looping. I could even hear the sound after I X out. So that's an example of a bug. You can go back and forth with Claude in natural language to get it to work the way you want it to. But out of the box, we have a lot of the app actually functional, even this autoplay in the gallery itself where you can download it. So that is pretty much it. You now have something that connects to and understands the Sora 2 API. So you can build your own Sora studio without having to go through a ton of spaghetti code that you'd otherwise might have to wrangle with if you went with the browser-based versions of Vibe Coding apps. Now, if you want the underlying prompt that I used along with the knowledge base file, I'm making that available to you completely for free in the second link in the description below so you can enjoy that. But if you want access to even more Claude code experiments along with the underlying code that you can take from myself to copy my apps verbatim, I have a whole section in my community called Claude Creations where we go deep in beginner-friendly, intermediate-friendly, all kinds of apps you can imagine Again, with the underlying code, the methodology, and most importantly, walkthroughs you'll never see on YouTube. So if that interests you, check out the first link in the description below, and maybe I'll see you inside my community, Early AI Adopters. I'll see you in the next one.